It's another fun 40 Fit Food Tuesday. We're here, we're ready. We are here and we're ready. So before we jump into what the episode plan for this week was, um, we're actually gonna address two questions we had at the end of the last week's episode that we didn't get to. So uh, a lot of people are always asking about pain and we do our quick disclaimer. We are not doctors, even though we look like doctors. Yeah. Well, we look like doctors um, on popular TV shows. All right, go on. Okay. <laughs> so we're not qualified to treat pain, but however, you should know that pain is not normal. So if you're walking around and feeling pain, that's not normal. Check that out. I will say if you take something like, let's say a lot of people talk about their knees and having pain in the knees, a lot of time pain is the, uh, or the side of pain is the victim. So your knee is the victim, not necessarily the culprit. So you'll blame like, oh, I have poor knees and that's why my knees hurt. But a lot of times um, that I have found with clients of mine is they have tight muscles up here, their quads are tight, their hips are tight, their ankles are, are tight, and repetitively moving the wrong way has caused them to have knee pain. Um, and that is not the knee's fault, that are, that's other, there are other factors that are involved that are the victim. Um, so Yeah, I would also yeah. like to address that, yes, as you get older, you start to feel more things than you used to, but I don't like to just kind of blame age. I don't either. I actually think that, you know, when we were younger, when you and I were younger, we were able to go outside and play and stuff like that, right? And we had a lot of, a lot of fun doing that. But um, as you get older, and in general, as we all get older, we stop doing thing, activities that are, that are fun, right? And so it's the lack of moving around. So you're not climbing trees anymore? No, not climbing You climb really trees. climb trees in Brooklyn now? A tree grew in Brooklyn. No, um, I basically... <laughs> ran. You did a lot of running in yeah, Brooklyn. I ran up a lot of stairs. Up and, and down away. Stairs, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, uh, I think it's the lack of movement, the lack of activity that causes the pain because what happens is you don't move for a long period of time. You're working, you're whatever, whatever it is that you're doing. And then you want to pursue some type of activity. And let's say it is uh, Kung Fu. And so you go from a sedentary lifestyle to then trying to do something like Kung Fu. Next thing you know, your, your knee hurts. It's not necessarily the knee's fault. It's just that that tissue has not been adapted to take the st stresses that are now being put on it. Right. And it's the lack of activity that has exposed, you know, or sorry, the lack of activity which is now being exposed by Kung the, your activity, let's say it's Kung Fu, that is causing your knee pain. So uh, that is, kind of like a roundabout oh, way to say it. It's, that's a it, big episode. That's a big episode. It, so, it depends on the person. It it, true, on the true. Person. And we have addressed that. And we are actually working on our archive footage so that you could see episode one through 14 and um, be able to kind of look up. That's okay, awesome. high-fiving on that. <laughs> uh, we're going to be, you'll be able to look up by episode kind of what we covered so you could get those quick tidbits um, in case you did miss that episode. But we did address that uh, in the past. We talk a lot about warming up the joints and doing all those things to kind of keep you nice and primed and prepped. Yeah. And um, another question we had was on kind of goal setting and intention. And Oscar actually did that in episode 10. So we, right. like I but said, I just we are going to post that. I was not, I was by myself in episode 10 and I did have a disclaimer when we started that episode that I said an awesome person for goal setting is Mimi and I was writing in my journal in that journal I wrote one day Mimi's going to be with me on an episode of 40 Fit Food talking about goal setting and see thought it put it on paper it came true you're here <laughs> with me so maybe we can talk about it more in the future but yes okay. yes so but we actually had kind of a plan for today's episode because we have you know like i said we just got back from china and we uh everybody who gets back is usually really inspired with their right. kung fu and as this is 40 fit food we really want to target um and, and address a lot of you guys who have questions about the kung fu in particular and a big part of the kung fu that everybody finds really cool is kicking oh my gosh i love kicking i also it love is kicking. really one of the I think greatest my favorite is like the roundhouse kick yeah really <laughs> so um we're just playing around. Um, that's just to see if you guys are paying attention and give any feedback Good. for us. <laughs> so that's the roundhouse kick, that's the twist kick. And, but okay, the big thing with kicking though is if I were actually gonna kick Oscar, I really probably wouldn't go for his face as much as a lot of you guys out there, a couple listeners that I know in particular, would really like to see me kick him in the face. Um, usually I'd probably like take out his knee or something because it's a lot more. See, and in that instance, 
my knee would be the victim, your foot would be the culprit. My knee pain. <laughs> and that's why I'd have knee pain. Case in point, the end. I think we're good here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did want to talk about the kicking because there are different types of kicking. So like those of you at Walla, you know, we do our normal stretch kicks and we're doing like straight leg kicks and we're, we're doing all this and this is all for stretching, right? But I'm not, I mean, I know you've seen it in movies where like they kick someone behind them and whatever, but that's actually not really the purpose of those kind of kicks. And when we are doing stuff like the roundhouse kicks or we're doing side kicks or heel kicks, you know, we're trying to generate power. Um, but in addition to that- This is a happy marriage. There's a lot going on. Uh, yeah, those of you who been following <laughs> us notice uh, we've been married uh, over 12 years now and we just celebrated that. But, um, but the power and being able to actually execute a kick is different from just stretching because right. people will say, oh, well, I can kick this high. But if you had an actual target or you wanted to generate power, it doesn't mean that that's your maximum or how would you right. kind of frame it a little bit differently? So this is going to get a little bit into the weeds, but maybe for the Kung Fu people, it won't be. But, um, you that's know, so weird. You never do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when we're doing like straight leg kicks in Kung Fu, bam. That's not too high, I don't want to rip anything. But um, straight leg kicks, at the beginning, for the beginning stu student, it is a dynamic warm-up. And it's also a dynamic warm-up for the media, uh, intermediate to advanced student, but as you start doing it more, you focus on a lot of things. You focus on timing, breathing, you focus on uh, bringing your leg down twice as fast as you bring it up, specifically for how we do our kicks. Yep. So it goes from being a dynamic warm-up where you start uh, with, with your passive range of motion, which you can throw your leg up and down with, to then becoming more of a skill, um, which is you can do, as I said, timing and breathing and uh, speeding. What we call we call this over speed eccentrics. Eccentrics is the, the negative part of a, of a motion. So, so negative meaning when we're on coming the way down. down, right? So yeah. on the way up is your concentric, your positive part of the of the movement. The downward part is the eccentric. Over speed eccentrics have been proven in a lot of strength training modalities to improve the control and the strength of a sp specific joint. Right. So whoever created these wall and basics was really smart, probably without knowing all the science behind it. But, no, probably not. <laughs> but um, that, that, that goes into the, that part, the straight leg kicks. That is, however, I still consider it um, passive range of motion because you are using momentum to throw your leg up and then kind of guiding it back down with the over speed eccentric part, the, the bringing it down twice as fast, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other type is to slowly raise your leg up. Like in Tai Chi. And hold as high as you can without too much compensation. Mm -hmm. And that is your active range of motion. And the difference between how high I can kick with my passive range <laughs> to how high I can bring my leg up in my squeeze, passive squeeze, range. Squeeze, squeeze. Yeah. Without cramping, <laughs> that difference is the difference between my, my passive range of motion and my active range of motion. And that is what we want to work on if we want to impre improve our kicks for accuracy, for power, for um, control. For control. Mm -hmm. And so there's a different modality that you would use to improve your kicks that way. And also, um, if you train that specifically, then you can also um, cut the learning curve a little bit. And all of a sudden, if you're, because you're training that out, you know, in addition to your other Kung Fu training, you'll be like, oh, my kicks have gotten better faster. Yeah, so for example, like when we're in class and we're just kind of doing warm-ups, mm -hmm. that's going to be your um, yeah, um, the passive, passive range. range of motion. And then when we're doing like bag work, that's where we want to kind of demonstrate, or sparring class or something right. like that, where we have something um, that we want to be able to target and do both ranges of motion. Yeah, and the thing is... Is one more important than the other? I think they're both important, but if I had to choose one, I would choose the active range of motion because when you can do something slowly and with control, then inevitably you'll be able to train to do it faster. If you just practice something fast, you won't maybe able to be able to express control over that movement. Okay. So as an example, I'm not going to pick my leg straight up, but I'll give you three examples, right? Um, if I raise my knee up mm -hmm. and just bring it up as fast as I can, yep. right? That could be a nice way for me to warm up. Mm -hmm. Bring my knees up, uh, knee ups, right? Um, another way is I can grab my knee and assist my knee and bring it up as high as I can, right? And then we can keep building up to this where I can bring my leg up, assist it, and then let go. And then wherever it drops, that's my, that's where maybe what I need to work on. 
And then the most challenging one would be... So that you lessen the deficit between your passive and active range. Right. And this feels like math. This, well, That's you know what we can look at it as? We can look at it as a progression okay. from the active to working towards the... the sorry, from, the, from the, that passive range of motion to working towards your, your actual active range of motion. Mm -hmm. So you're going from step one, which is this, and instead of going right to slow motion, we can go to assist then assist and let go, mm -hmm. and then on our own. Right. And maybe not all in the same workout. Maybe right. you can kind of layer that in. And that same thing that I did with my knee, you can do with, with an extended, extended kick. kick. Mm -hmm. It's just, that is another layer of difficulty because then we're working on two joints, not just my hips, but my hips and extending my knees, which just, the more joints you involve, the more muscles you involve. So that's where things get a little more, a bit more uh, complicated. Right, right, right. And right. so a lot of students always, you know, they get, frustrated, right? Like we see it in class all the time. So we just like to reiterate that it doesn't matter how high you kick. Like just accept where your passive and yeah. active range is because let's even talk about passive uh, range of motion. Sometimes you do, you know, your kick, but then you're bending your back over or you're bending your knee, you know, you're, you're sacrificing form in order to quote unquote kick higher. So that is not the goal. I agree 100%. Yes. So when we are teaching our classes, and this goes not just for Tai Chi and Kung Fu, but also for the uh, uh, strength training. Uh, one of the most important things is posture, position, uh, however you want to frame it, but it's kind of keeping your torso in a certain position while moving other joints through space. Right. So uh, for the straight leg kick example that we've been using, we wouldn't want to start bringing our chest <laughs> towards our foot because then again, we call that uh, fake fle flexibility, right? Because you're moving your body forward and your leg forward, it's not showing what your true range of motion is. Right. You can't practice your true range of motion, you don't have control over that. If you don't have control over that, you can't really express it, um, I don't know, nicely, beautifully. You can't really express the movement the way that you want to. It could be in a nice fluid type uh, form uh, application, or it can be in sparring where you really would maybe want to cause damage to someone else. So. Um, damage, wow. Depends how um, <laughs> bad your peak was, I guess. Yeah, uh, but um, but if you either way, if you don't practice it with a little bit of control first, mm -hmm. it's just not one. It's not going to look right, but two, it's not going to have the effect that you want it to have. Right, and, and, and you're going to build bad habits, and bad which habits. is the worst part. So uh, you know, I always tell the students, um, and like I'm telling all of you, uh, speed is like the last element you even want to worry about. Um, and also, when it comes to kicks, you know, don't worry about. Mm -hmm. wanting to kick so high, you know, get the proper technique, get the proper form down, and really build from there. It right. does feel like a slow progression, um, but that's what it should be, right? Yeah, and you know, so that's actually a really, really good point. So you take, um, we just did a, a, a class a couple days ago on sparring, and we're hitting the bags. And I always say the first step is accuracy. So if you're punching, just make sure that you're accurately hitting the same exact spot. And then after that, try to build power while still being accurate. Right. Which doesn't mean necessarily that you'll go faster, but you're still building power. You're, you're still being accurate. And then without losing your accuracy and without losing the power, you try to build up speed. Right. Speed should be the last thing. And the same thing should be, can be said then when building the skill practice of, let's say, a leg kick. Right? Try to be accurate. What does accurate mean? Accurate means you're in a good position, you're kicking with your leg straight, you're pointing your toes towards your shin. Then what's power? It's building up strength and control over that movement. And then finally is speed, right? And sometimes I think we gotta get a little bit mixed up and say, well, let's try to go as fast yeah, as we well, can. Yeah, well, you know, or maybe like the students are just trying to go fast so that I don't see them. <laughs> <laughs> no, that never happens, but it does. And it also feels better, or maybe you're just so tired, you're trying to get it over with quicker, but really, um, as speed gets introduced, I do notice even in advanced students, things get sloppier and yep. that's where I'm really reiterating and emphasizing like build good habits. So if you really want good habits, you know, introduce speed last, but um, specifically we've been talking about kicking today. We were kidding around and kicked you in the face today, but um, we'll talk about that range now. You know, you see some of these really great, especially I'm, I'm gonna give a shout out to those Taekwondo practitioners. Oh, yeah. They're able to really extend and hold their kicks over their, you know, um, and there's just all this control, like what's really going on in there? What kind of exercises? Because a lot of the students, um, I think can build that passive range, of, right. an active range of motion actually, uh, by doing some of the exercises that we've been trying to focus on. But it, 
like anything else, guys, it takes so much time, but maybe you can give us one of those quick tips um, to help kind of increase that range, other than um, the knee hold, is right. there a stretch or something that we can um, do? Go-to stretch or movement for lower body exercises is the 90-90 stretch. Mm -hmm. I can post a video yep. on it and I, show. You might have done it on a 40 fit um, or um, on his Instagram if you want to follow yeah. Control Your Health. Uh, so those of you joining us, just joining us, uh, we are both streaming on Control Your Health and on Sifu Mimi Chan, so you can tune in on either one, and again, you can always ask questions, but we do post things here, but also on our other social media, so make sure you are following us. Right, yeah. So, um, if I had one stretch that I would do for lower body to start with is that 90-90 stretch. You can do it um, just as a passive stretch, which you're just kind of sitting into the position. But the beautiful thing about that, um, if you can imagine kind of your leg making a Z, <laughs> your leg's making a Z, again, I'd have to post it for you to see it. But the beautiful thing with that stretch is that you're working externally rotating one hip while internally rotating the other hip, and then you switch and do the opposite. And again, apologize if it goes a little bit deep in here, but um, what most people want to do when they do kicks <laughs> is they want to kick high. Straight up, straight up this way, right? They want to linearly kick high. Um, and they have deficits there where their linear, their linear movements are, are, there's a deficit into it. But if you don't address the rotational deficits first, oh which goodness. are addressed by doing that 90-90 stretch, because you're externally rotating and internally rotating, if you address the, in, the rotation first, then you're going to progress faster with your linear deficit. Case oh my gosh. Did, did I, I lose feel you? like we need a chalkboard so, with the, you know, I need so, to so, the okay. school mode. Okay, so, here, so here's what I mean. That 90-90 stretch, you have kind of are turning your hip out. If this were my arm, I'm kind of, I'm turning my hips out this way, and I'm turning my hips out this way. Does that make sense? So I'm kind of, I'm turning my hips out. I'm rotating my hips. Yeah. But you can if use my I, camera if you want to. If I address that first, then I will be able to improve the linear movement which is what people want to do is they want to kick high. Mm -hmm. by, by being able to address whatever issues you have with rotating your hips, you're going to be able to raise, extend, So do will all that the also stuff. help, like in the beginning I did like a roundhouse kick, right. is that also still effective or is it only in a linear motion? No. Roundhouse, I guess it is kind of, it can be. It linear. can be linear and it, and it does, does all that stuff. But here's the thing, just because you practice that 90-90 stretch does not mean that you don't do everything else. There's no movement that doesn't matter. There's no movement that's not important. Every movement has value. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, what do I want to get good at? Mm -hmm. And then the second question you have to ask yourself is, am I addressing that every single day by putting the right inputs into that? And if I'm not, then don't complain that you haven't improved. Just be like, you know what? I haven't been addressing my issues. Yes. That's, that's all that it is. Because the body gets good at, um, at what it does the most. And unfortunately, we spend a lot of time not doing kicks, so we can't really complain when we try to do a kick and say, why is it not as good as it should be? Mm -hmm. It's probably just because we haven't put enough time practicing. Right, which is why students, you should absolutely love those drill classes that your Sifu's put you through, because honestly, they're giving you an opportunity to do that repetition and that rep repetitive kick over and over and over, up and down the room, and that is actually what we need. Now, we don't like to do it, but it is what we need. So, let's actually tie in our questions from the beginning of the episode and how it kind of applies to I this. Forgot. I forgot. Oh my gosh, <laughs> mind melt. Um, so, at the beginning, we addressed... You know, for example, a lot of people hurt their knee when they do a kick, for example. Yep. Um, and we talked a little bit about knee and joint pain and stuff, and we'll go into that more in detail. But, um, you know, pretty simply put, if you're doing the movement right, which is what you said in the beginning, then you shouldn't be having pain. So if you're kicking and you're like, oh, this hurts me, particularly your knee or your hip, then that means you're probably doing the motion wrong or you're overcompensating, probably trying to kick too high or too fast. So if there's pain, just stop. If there's pain, just stop. Number two is we don't expect you to be like a professional, right? Like I spend all really? day thinking about this. Oh. <laughs> I spend all day thinking about this, training it, talking about it, watching videos. So um, uh, when something happens, I kind of have a step-by-step -step process of what I should do. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna tell you sort of what it is. And the thing is, no one should know your body better than you are. Now, if you've really injured yourself, obviously go see a professional, right? But on a day-to-day -day stuff of like day-to-day -day issues that you may have, you should be able to try to Sherlock Holmes that thing and figure out what the issue is. So, um, if you're walking around and you've got knee pain, right? First thing you're gonna look at is like, well, what is it wrong with my knee? Um, and this is where now a lot of things can come into play. 
Did you sleep all the night before? What did you eat? Because some foods are inflammatory. And not just what you ate last night, but what you've been eating over the course of a long period of time, right? All those things you take into account. Then you go into, well, what kind of activity did I just do? How did I just move? What, did I just get up out of bed quickly? Did I do, you know, did I do something which was twisted? Right. Um, and then always go up and downstream the area of pain. If we're talking about a joint like the knee, start looking up that, that area upstream and say, well, what's going on with my quads? Are my hips tight? Or also go down. My calves tight? Is my ankle? Did I have some issue where I twisted something? Um, as I said earlier, usually the site of the pain is the victim and not the culprit. Um, and we immediately, like taking something like the knee, say, well, I'm going to ice my knees. Right. But that's not going to address the overall issue that caused you to have knee pain. It may bring down a little bit of inflammation, make you temporarily feel better, but it's not necessarily going to fix the problem. Heal you! <laughs> I don't know why, but something just came over me. Yeah, I guess so. It's probably your hunger. <laughs> oh, <bunker>. hey, Lynn. <laughs> um, well, that's kind of back to it's all connected, right? So, like, the hip bone's connected to the, you know. <laughs> right. So, basically, you know, since it's all connected. And the first question we had from the beginning of the episode also was goal setting. So, for example, if you want to take a kick and mm -hmm. you want to make it, you know, something that you want to make your goal, define what that is first. So, whether it's kicking higher, kicking stronger, you know, um, just making it look all nicer, of all of the above, or, um, you know, kicking without pain, like just kind of break that down. Give yourself a time frame and then just take all of these items that all these, um, to, tips that we gave you and just kind of try to bring that into play where build it over time. Don't try to introduce everything all at once. I think that's a great point. Um, when it comes to goal setting, as you know, the more specific that you are, that's right. the more, the more likely you are going to reach that goal. And also the, the, the smaller amount of goals that you have, right? The more likely it is that you'll actually reach the goal. So if it's like, um, I want to kick, Hi. I want to kick higher being yeah, a goal. Gustav is on saying hello. Oh, the pastavas, what up? <laughs> um, so if, um, if I want to kick higher is a goal, yes. right? Me, um, that's one level. That's our passive range. <laughs> let's, let's, um, let's kind of uh, make that more specific. Like I want to kick higher specifically I on- I want to be able to kick Oscar in the face. Right, so you want to kick someone, it, my, I'm 5'9", so you just got to kick a little bit lower than 5'9", to reach to my face, right? <laughs> so there's another specific goal. Then you want to get a little more specific? I want to kick Oscar in the face specifically with a heel kick right. or a roundhouse kick or a side kick. Now you're really specific and then you can say, now I'm going to train that specific kick to get there. And I will tell you what, on your journey to specifically kick Oscar in his face with your heel, you're going to learn a lot about your body and you're going to also then eventually be able to say, wow, not only can I kick Oscar in the face with my heel, I can also do a roundhouse kick to his face, I can also side kick him to his face and eventually I can also flying side kick or drop kick him to the Yeah, well, we don't, so, we don't want to go too crazy. Yeah, but what I'm saying is <laughs> try to be specific with it and then that use that very specific goal to direct you uh, on your day-to-day -day actions. Yeah, Makes that sense? should be in your day-to-day -day actions, everyone. <laughs> Kicking Oscar in the face it's with a very specific kick. Be very specific. <laughs> I think we've, we've gone on long enough. Yes, I This think has so. gone down a very dark... <laughs> dark road. <laughs> um, I did just want to note that um, if those of you watching on my camera, I wanted you to know that Oscar took my tripod today and I was nice enough to give it to him since his phone's nicer and so mine's propped up all weird so I apologize for the bad camera angle. And I would like to thank you for lending me your <laughs> tripod because as you know I'm very uh, clumsy with my phone and also not technologically savvy. <laughs> Something could have gone terribly wrong um, but thanks to your generosity Go on. <laughs> now everything is right in the world. <laughs> I just know you know it's bothering oh me because I could see the yeah. ceiling in this. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in to 40 Fit Foo with us every Tuesday here at 7.30 on Facebook Live on Control Your Health and at Sifu Mimi Chan. Don't forget, some of the things we talked about will also be on our social media sites, Instagram. I um, promise we'll that, that I will post a 90-90 stretch with 90 instructions. 90 stretch with instructions. And also we are working on getting that YouTube channel so you can go back in time and uh, check out some of those old videos for some of the specific posts that you're looking for. Thanks, guys. All right, Have thanks a great everybody. Thanksgiving. We're so grateful that you are watching our Eat show. Eat all the turkey. <laughs> Eat it all. Bye-bye.